Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Hugar again. One of the things I really missed with the schools being closed is I haven't had a chance to read a book to you. One of my things I look forward to every day is our read-alouds. So I was thinking I could start videotaping myself reading a chapter or two of a book each day and posting it up on YouTube. And that would be another way that, you know, we could interact and we would kind of make it seem like things are still kind of normal like they were during a normal school day. So I have a book I was going to start reading, and we've already read a book from this series. It's a book from the Magic Treehouse book. And I am allowed to read these books to you online. This is for fair use, and this is published by Random House, and they're allowing uh, teachers to read books during this time. So I'm going to read a little bit of this book here for us, and then we will... I'll come back and I'll read it, finish the book up in a couple of days. So this is the second of the Magic Treehouse books, The Night at Dawn. They're kind of doing a joke with a play on words because you have a knight is the you know, man in shining armor from you know, long ago, and night is also darkness. So our story is The Night of Dawn by Mary Pope Osborne. And chapter one is titled The Dark Woods. Jack couldn't sleep. He put his glasses on, and he looked at the clock. It was 5.30. Too early to get up. Yesterday, so many strange things had happened. Now he was trying to figure out them all out. He turned on the light. He picked up his notebook, and he looked at the list he made before going to bed. Found treehouse in woods. Found lots of books in it. Pointed at a picture in a book and made a wish went to the time of the dinosaurs, pointed to a picture of Frog Creek Woods, made a whoosh, and came home to Frog Creek. Jack pushed his glasses into place. Who was going to believe any of this? Not his mom, or his dad, or his third grade teacher, Miss Watkins, only his seven-year-old sister, Annie. She'd gone with him to the time of the dinosaurs. Can't you sleep? It was Annie standing in the doorway. Nope, said Jack. Me neither, said Annie. What are you doing? She walked over to Jack and looked at his notebook. She read the list. Aren't you going to write about the gold medal, she asked. You mean the gold medallion, said Jack. He picked up his pencil and wrote. Found this in dinosaur times. Aren't you going to put the letter M in the medal, said Annie. Medallion, said Jack, not medal. He added an M to the medallion in his notebook. Aren't you going to write about the magic person, said Annie? We don't know for sure if there is a magic person, said Jack. Well, someone built the treehouse in the woods. Someone put the books in it. Someone lost a gold medal in dinosaur time. Medallion, said Jack for the third time. I'm just writing the facts, the stuff we know for sure. Let's go back to the treehouse right now, said Annie and find out if the magic person is a fact. Are you nuts, said Jack. The sun's not even up yet. Come on, said Annie. Maybe we can catch them sleeping. I don't think we should, said Jack. He was worried. What if the magic person was mean? What if he or she didn't want kids to know about the treehouse? Well, I'm going, said Annie. Jack looked out his window at the dark gray sky. It was almost dawn. He sighed. Okay, let's get dressed. I'll meet you at the back door. Be quiet. Yes, shouted it, whispered Annie. She tiptoed away as quickly as a mouse. Jack put on jeans, a warm sweatshirt, and sneakers. He tossed his notebook and pencil in his backpack. He crept downstairs. Annie was waiting by the back door. She shined a flashlight in Jack's face. Ta-da! Magic wand, she said. Shh! Don't wake up Mom and Dad, whispered Jack, and turn that flashlight off. We don't want anyone to see us. Annie nodded and turned it off. Then she clipped it under her belt. They slipped out the door and into the cool early morning air. Crickets were chirping. The dog next door barked. Quiet, Henry, whisp quiet. Henry, whispered Annie. Henry stopped barking. Animal always seemed to do what Annie said. Let's run, said Jack. They dashed across the dark, wet lawn. They didn't stop until they reached the woods. 
We need the flashlight now, said Jack. Annie took the flashlight off her belt and switched it on. Step by step, she and Jack walked between the trees. Jack held his breath. The dark woods were scary. Gotcha, said Annie, shining the flashlight in Jack's face. Jack jumped back. Then he frowned. Cut it out, he said. I scared you, said Annie. Jack just glared at her. Stop pretending, he whispered. This is serious. Okay, okay. Annie shined her flashlight over the tops of the trees. Now what are you doing, said Jack. I'm looking for the treehouse. The light stopped moving. There it was, the mysterious treehouse, at the top of the tallest tree in the woods. Annie shined her light at the treehouse, and then down the tall ladder, all the way to the ground. I'm going up, she said. She gripped the flashlight and began to climb. Wait, Jack called. What if someone was in the treehouse? Annie, come back. But she was gone. The light disappeared. Jack was alone in the dark. Chapter 2, I will read and post tomorrow. Thank you, and I hope you're having fun, boys and girls. Bye-bye.